Absolutely, it's encouraging. Uh, we had 25 minutes of a, of a good game. We fought, we fought good. Uh, we shared the ball good. Shots were going in, and we had a dip uh, in the second half. I mean, it's a step forward for, for us uh, having those 25 minutes. Uh, the next thing we gotta do, we just have to turn those 25 minutes into the 40 minutes, and that's how we're gonna win the game. I mean, I mean, last 15 possessions we, we had only a couple stops. So uh, that's the that's the one and only reason we lost we lost the game. Can you point to anything to explain the fast start? Was there any difference in the way you guys prepared or got ready for tonight? No, no, I, no, I, I didn't see any difference. We were preparing just like for every other game. I think we're just getting better as a team. Uh, I think that's why we started the game the way we started. Is there something you notice when things kind of do start to go south? Is it just not executing plays? Is it just shots not falling? Is it just kind of a combination of, of everything? I don't see anything uh, else. I mean, we I mean, we got to be patient. I mean, the main players, we are, we are young. We are still young. We are sophomores. And we we have uh, we have a couple of guys seniors they really they really encourage, encourage we we really look look up to them and we just have to we just have to look up to them in a way of playing 25 minutes playing 40 minutes instead of 25 minutes good that's it I don't see I don't see any any other reason than that we just have to be patient and I think even though we lost the game I I see a lot of good things here and I, I'm pretty sure we're gonna we're gonna bounce back for from everything. In terms of being patient, is it hard, harder to be patient when you do see the 25 minutes and you're like, hey, we're getting close, but you know, you want it now, but you know, is it hard to be patient? That's the moment you got to be patient mo the most. It is hard. It's always hard to be patient, especially after the loss. It's easy to be patient after the win. So now we're going to see, now we're going to see what kind of char characters we are as a team, as individuals. And I think that's the, that's the, that's the thing we, we're going to do. Arizona State had, I mean, obviously outscored you in the second half, but also had an edge in rebounds. Was part of this simply fatigue? Did, did you guys get tired of I mean, obviously we, we got tired. We play, we have a hard schedule. I mean, every, I, I mean, every other team has, has, has a hard schedules. And that's the, that's the, I mean, this is the part of the year, period of the year. You gotta, you gotta be more, the most patient, take care of our bodies and, um, we're gonna we're gonna get better with uh, with uh, with that part for sure. Just uh, uh, mixed feelings coming out of the game because uh, coming off a really disappointing loss the other day against a team that outplayed us, um, and a relatively quick turnaround from that, uh, we came out of the locker room today with so much energy. You know, leaving the locker room to come up to the court to start the game. I was like, wow, what, what's going on here? They were really fired up to play. And you saw that the way we started the game. We played with a high level of energy. Um, and, and it felt like in the game, to start the game, that the guys felt like, all right, tonight's going to be the night where we get over the hump and we turn the page and we start getting you know, this thing going. Instead of just saying, all right, it's going to be 40 minutes and we're going to have to play at a level. But I do think... You know, the encouraging sign for the game, the thing that I walk away with against a good team is that for a period of time, we were playing at a level defensively that is indicative of what we want our program to look like, the the, the program we're trying to build. And, um, and my message to the team before the game, they can't hear it now as much, is that I've got to do a better job with this particular group of making them continue to uh, have a level of big picture thinking and not to wallow in the disappointment of us not being a finished product right now and not wanting the results that, uh, that they may have uh, concocted some expectations of. We just want to continue to grow so that we could become whatever it is this team is capable of becoming. And in the first half, we showed some signs of that. What would it look like? if we became good. Conversely, of the last 15 possessions of the game, we only got two stops. And so 
uh, that contrast, that's, that's where we need to improve. The last 12 possessions of the previous game, we got one stop. So in their effort to come in and make up for that, they came in and they played with tremendous energy, loose balls, rebounds, deflections, to some real staunch half-court, committed, passionate man-to-man -man defense. And um, so there's something to build on there, and uh, that's where we'll try to start from a focus standpoint tomorrow. Um, it definitely was, um, but I was, I was going to let it go. Um, but, uh, the fact of the matter is it comes down to toughness. Um, but it also is a matter of growth. Like we made a chart and put it on the board, um, uh, two weeks ago. And uh, there was two columns. On one column, it was uh, yes, and the right column was not yet. And the topics were, are we talented? Yes. Are we experienced? Not yet. Are we accomplished? Not yet. Are we tough? Not yet. Are we disciplined? Have we established an identity? And everything else was not yet. And if you go around the country and you talk to top teams in the country, if you talk to Bobby Hurley, he's going to say we're a work in progress. Well, if Duke gets to be a work in progress, then who, who, who should we be? And so we need in our gym and through that first half to build expectations. We're not trying to live up to anything. This, we've got a group of guys who've never done anything in college who've never played together before, and the guys who have returned haven't really done enough to really be considered uh, experienced at this level. So even our most experienced guys, whether it's F.A., who's got a lot of college experience, hasn't done it at this level. Um, Zach has a lot of college experience. Zurich, very little. Um, Sam has been at a high level. So by and large... Um, we're a work in progress and we have the right to be that and we have to be okay with that as opposed to viewing ourselves as somehow being underachievers or failures or anything. Like I'm trying to make sure that mentally that they don't do that to themselves. It's okay if other people do that. That's fine. We can't control that. But we can't do that to ourselves. So those last 12 possessions or 15 possessions in that poorly worded question, um, we, we've got to We've got to play like we did in the first half and use that as a, as, a, as a point of saying, okay, we're capable of doing this. Now we've got to extend that. And now we've got to finish a game like that. That's part of our growth as opposed to the world is crashing down and we've got to do a better job of getting them to see it through that particular lens. You described this as when you saw your team's energy early on as a game when maybe they thought this would be the night they get over the hump and it was against a team that came in with an 8-1 record and you go to the locker room up five. Is your message to the team about maintaining what they did or trying to clean things up and make any changes going to the second half? Um, yeah, it was about uh, shot selection towards the end of the first half. You know, we had some really empty, poor possessions because they were making a bit of a run down the stretch and we were trying to answer quickly instead of getting back to what got us in that position. We were up 11 and then they made a run and cut it to five and quite frankly we didn't handle that well. It was like the, the you know they were making a run as good teams might do and if you're playing in a good league like we play in there's going to be teams that run and it was almost like Tonight's our night, and you guys are spoiling it. Come on, guys. You know that, that's how it kind of felt, and we started to tighten up a little bit, and you know we played it with a little panic at the end of the half. So that was the message, and we were trying to turn it back on the defense. The way we started the game defensively, we got to get back to that, and uh, we do something called kills. You get three consecutive stops. That that's one kill. I think we may have talked about this before, and. 
We had three of them in the first half, but we were in the kill zone, which means we got two and we got to get the third one. We were in that zone six times. So we were trending that way, and we didn't get any in the second half. That's the game. And they got to see that. It's not about individual performances or anything. It, 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 it's that. And we, we, we can't lose sight of that. In the second half, did you, what, what did you see that kind of continued maybe some of that from the end of the first half? Was it shot selection again? Was it defense? It was, it was the defense. It was the defense that bled into the offense. And, and, you know, in the first half, we were actually in transition some. We were getting down the court because we were getting stops, multiple stops. And uh, we were aggressive in ball screens. We covered their actions, and we were getting the ball, and we were getting out and running. In the second half, we were getting less stops, and so we were always in five on five, always in the half court and laboring against denials and switching and, and all of these things, which they didn't play any different in the first half, but we were getting stops and we were making them have to run back and guard. And so we were playing from a different vantage point, if that makes sense, because we were getting out in transition, putting pressure on their D. But their defense went up a notch because they it's like in football, if you just keep putting your, you know, defense back on the field, eventually, you know, it's going to get tougher. And I think that's what started to happen. Here's my attempt at a better word of question. But when you have the first 20 minutes like you did, does that make preaching patience and, hey, we're still a work in progress tougher, saying, hey, how tantalizingly close we were in that first half? I, I, I don't know if that question is much better. Um, but no, it is. I'm just kidding. Um, I, I would say, um, I, no, I don't think it's tougher because I, listen, from, a, from a program standpoint, you have to have moments that allow you to display, like I can't come in a locker room and show highlights of Georgia state or Tennessee as a, as a way of explaining to them what I want this to look like, how we need to compete and what we need to do to become the team and the program that we want to become. And we, we, we did some things against Louisiana and against Evansville in the second half and in the Dayton game for a, a period of time where we showed some grit and some toughness. And in the disappointment of some losses, we didn't go into the Texas A&M game with the kind of fight we brought tonight. And so the fact of the matter is the fight that we brought to the first half gives us a snapshot of, okay, okay, we're capable of this. And you felt it in the timeouts. And so there's a frame of reference there that, that should serve us well um, and, and that, that we can build on. And I think that's got to be the focus right now, particularly with a team that wants confidence well. You deserve that. If you if you play like that, you'll you'll get confident. Zach Nuttall looked like he fell early in the game. Yeah. And may have been laboring a little bit. Um, just looking at his body language, he was wincing a bit. Yeah. How limited was he on either end of the floor throughout the rest of the game? Um. Yeah, I, I haven't talked to Miles about what exactly he did there that that was uh, ailing him during the game. Um. He was exhausted. He's playing a lot of minutes. And uh, and emotionally, he I mean, he invests a lot in this. Like, he really is about it. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a wonderful kid. And and I worry about him. You know, he gets so invested that I think he gets a little too down. You know, I think, uh, you know, how do you get a kid not to be disappointed? Like, you want him to be disappointed. You want him to care. And then you want him to continue to bounce back, right? So uh, uh, he and Zurich and Sam, oh, those guys – they they brought some energy and they, they they had they they created some high hopes there and um but I th I think I think he'll 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 be fine I don't think there's anything serious there you know is there something you can do in practice or simulate anything to get that 25 minutes into a full 40 minutes for for this group um. I think that is a byproduct of the totality of what you're doing, right? Um, 
But it's so hard to get. And this is where I've done a, 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 I haven't done a great job with these guys is sometimes as a coach or as a staff, you can't take your eye off the big picture. And sometimes in the disappointment, you, you wind up too focused on, on what's going on right here, right now. Without, uh, there has to be a constant message about our growth and our process and what we're trying to become. And so you just have to keep hammering at home. Uh, one thing that does happen is when you have a half like we had in the first half or a second half like we had against Evansville or some stretches like we had against Louisiana, you can use video and you can use that evidence to say that, that we're capable of doing these things. And um, But, you know, in terms of doing it as a team when the lights come on, you know, your, your practices are geared towards developing that. That's constantly what you're doing. And then you need, to, you need a breakthrough. You need that breakthrough. Tonight presented an opportunity to make a breakthrough that it, we didn't quite make, but th there's some stuff there that we can, that we can use. Sam struggled with his shot from the floor, but he also had 12 rebounds, four offensive, a couple of assists, steal, a couple of blocks. How would you characterize his performance tonight? Yeah, I thought he was tremendous. You know, the shot thing is, has become mental with him. And, uh, and he's such a talented guy that even with those struggles that he could go out and affect the game in that way. It's a credit to him. And I think that's something he can do every night. But I do think sometimes he gets uh, – because, I mean, Nobody spends more time in the gym than Sam does. You know, some guys, when they're struggling, they act like something's happening to them and they just want, want things to change. But, you know, at midnight tonight, he'd probably still be in there. He, he, he'll be in the gym tonight till 1 in the morning. That's what he does to himself. And so, you know, you can tell him not to, but, I mean, he's a worker. So I'm, I'm pulling for him. He shot a three tonight, and... I don't care what's going on again. I just wanted to go in for the kid because he's trying so hard and he's and he's backing it up with work. He's not like just hoping things happen. He's working at it. Um, so there, there's some anxiety around that. But while that's going on, to go get 12 rebounds and four offensive rebounds in the game, and he had a chance at a couple of putbacks, and you know I hate it when he missed the free throw, but uh, I'm I'm proud of him doing what he did tonight.